Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to the CNBC TV18 Mumbai newsroom. I'm Pavitra Parekh. You're tuned into Your Stocks and we have lots of queries lined up that we are going to get to in just a minute. But first up, a quick look at the market. We are at the low point of the day, uh, just slightly off the lows right now, but it's 18,194 actually. So we've actually even gone below that 18,200 mark, completely at the low point of the day. It's an over 1% cut that we are seeing on the Nifty. The mid cap index is also where you're seeing a lot of the pain come through after holding up for much of the morning that is actually underperforming even the key indices right now and that index is down over 500 points 1.6 percent gone on the mid cap index the banks are looking quite terrible it's an over 800 point cut on the nifty bank index and 1.9% uh, lower there. So that also in the past few minutes, like you can see, has taken a sharp knock. That's what is going on with the market action. We're going to, you know, we're tracking this and we'll keep coming back to this. But first up, let me invite our guests on the show today. We have Shara Davasti, the head of PCG Research, and Richard Jain from PyPesa.com to answer all of your stock-related queries. Shara, as well as Richard, thank you very much for joining us today and taking out the time to, ans uh, to answer all of our viewer-related queries. I'm going to get straight to them. The first one comes in from Manoj Sathe who writes to us from Setara. He says he has 200 shares of General Insurance Corporation, that's GIC, bought at 240. And he also has 500 shares of Indian Overseas Bank, IOB, at 25 rupees. He's a medium-term investor. So I'm guessing a couple of years is what he can hold on. And he wants to know what he should do with both of these investments. Uh, Sharad, let me come to you first on this. GIC today is uh, well, quite a day to talk about it. Today the stock is, you know, down around 7%. But uh, take us through what you think of this one. The high was over 400. And then IOB, of course, has seen a stellar rally. <coughs> Uh, yeah, so I think uh, GIC, uh, he can continue to hold on. Uh, what has happened over the last uh, one or two years post-COVID is that most of the abnormalities in the general insurance and the reinsurance sector have been readjusted. Uh, most of the premiums have been worked upwards and there is a possibility that uh, most general insurance companies would keep growing. Uh, they also have an international exposure. So in India, they have around 64% share of the market. And uh, with uh, debt uh, yields also going up, part of the investments will also yield better results. So I think uh, GIC can continue to hold on. Valuations are not very expensive either. Uh, the stock is trading at a price to book of somewhere around 0.8 times. Uh, we expect earnings for the next two years to be somewhere around 19, 18 to 19 rupees. So based on that, if a price to book multiple of 0.8x is also a price to book multiple of uh, uh, point 0.8x is also considered on the forward numbers uh, and uh, PE of around 18x, I think uh, the fair value should be around 350. So I think GIC reinsurance they should continue to hold. <coughs> IOB, I think uh, uh, the valuations are a tad expensive. Uh, the bank had a problem with the NPA book. Uh, most of the corporate loans, at least 40% of the corporate loans given by the bank had turned into NPAs. Uh, post the PCA and all that, now it is in better shape. The GNPAs are at around 12% and the NNPAs are at around 3%. Uh, but uh, going forward, I think the valuation at which the bank is already trading is somewhere around uh, 2.7x uh, price to book multiples. And I do not see much of an improvement happening over the next one, one and a half year. So I think IOB is uh, comparatively expensive so that he can exit. All right, that is the call coming in on GIC as well as IOB. Richard, let me come to you as well for a technical check on both of these stocks. How are these looking on the charts? Hi, very good afternoon, Pavitra. Well, uh, most of the PSU names have uh, you know, witnessed good volumes in the last couple of months, but I think one should be very selective in holding on at current levels. Uh, so among these two, I think GIC IRE could be held on uh, no, because we have seen that it took a long consolidation breakout uh, no, uh, about one, one and a half months back. And the volumes have been good off late, which indicates a good buying interest in the stock. Now, considering the supports, 160 and 140 are the good support levels uh, for the stock on any declines. And I believe that once the stock retraces the recent up move, then it, it could again witness some buying interest at lower levels. So GIC would be a hold at current levels. IOB, I would advise to look at to take an exit from this stock, uh, no, although the PSU banks have been doing well. But the momentum readings have now got into overbought zone from where we have seen some negative crossovers also. So I think some bit of volatility, higher volatility would be there in these PSU names. Uh, he can uh, look to shift into some other better names such as SBI or Bank of Baroda, I, I think where you know, the margin of safety or relative volatility would be lower than you know, some uh, other mid-sized uh, PSU banks. So IOB could be exited and you know, the same uh, portfolio amount could be shifted to SBI. 
All right, that is the complete technical as well as fundamental view on both of these stocks. With that, let's move on to our next query. We have Amrish Gupta, who writes to us from Chandigarh. He holds 200 shares of Shipping Corporation of India. He bought these at 135 rupees a share. He says he's a long-term investor and he wants to know whether he should hold or sell this one. Shipping Corporation of India, let me come to you, Ruchit. It's up 8% in this month. So this month, there's definitely been some good momentum. Uh, do you see this continuing? So not in the short term because yesterday we witnessed a good breakout in the stock but there was no follow-up buying uh, no after the morning breakout which we witnessed. So I think unless we see some follow-up buying action in the stock, the short term uh, trend would continue to remain sideways and we may see some consolidation in the range of 145 to 130. But the long term charts are not bad. So I think uh, if he has a view of uh, mid to long term, I mean at least a, a year or so, then he can continue to hold on, hold on but should not expect any great moves in the short term. Okay, that is on shipping corporation. Let me come to you as well, Sharad, on this. How do you look at this? Because, you know, he does have a long-term horizon, so he's comfortable holding if you think that there's uh, there's good potential upside here. Yeah, I think the valuations are not particularly uh, very expensive. That stock is trading at around 11 times uh, based on past numbers also. Uh, though there could be uh, some flip-flop on the numbers because the uh, shipping rates have been moving up and down in a very volatile fashion uh, post-COVID. Uh, First they went up and now they have corrected substantially, but they are still higher than the long-term averages. And a lot of the share for that shipping corporation has is in the crude carriers, it is the largest shipping company in India. Uh, so I think uh, it would be sensible to hold on to it. I think the ideal multiples could be somewhere around 15 to 16 times. So considering that, I think if he gets a price of around 200 to 225, that would be a better price to exit the stock. All right, got it. That is on SCI. By the way, spare a minute for the markets. It's a 200-point cut that we are seeing on the Nifty, absolutely at the low point of the day. And it is the banks which are uh, contributing a lot to the decline today. So right now we're seeing a 1.8% cut on the Nifty Bank. By the way, the Adani Group stock, some of them have just completely seen a downtick in the past few minutes. So take a look at Adani Enterprises. It is the top loser on the Nifty right now, coming up with a cut of over 6%, 6.5% gone on Adani Enterprises. You also have Adani Ports, which is seeing a near 4% knock. So do keep these on your radar. The market seems to really be slipping um, at, and completely at the low point of the day, like I was telling you, over 1% gone. Uh, by the way, the rest of the Asian markets are holding up quite well. So Nikkei is not seeing too much of a cut. It's been steady with that around half a percent knock. You have Taiwan, Hansen, which are all trading in the green. Uh, but our markets have come under pressure in the past few minutes. Let's get back to our queries and we're going to keep tracking the market action. The next query comes in from Komal Bhatija, who writes to us from Indore. She holds 1,000 shares of Indian Railway Fin Corp, that is IRFC, bought at 35 and 1,500 shares of Bank of Maharashtra as well that she bought at 21. Once again, she's a long-term investor and wants to know whether these stocks are good for the long term or, you know, if our guests would perhaps suggest some other um, Long-term investor, so Sharad, I'm going to come to you on this one first. She bought IRFC, but she bought it pretty much at the highs, right? The current price is 33. Um, do you think that she got in at a very expensive price or it's, it's fine and we could see the stock sort of make up this loss? Yeah, I think it's still fine. Uh, even in the current price, the stock is trading at a price to book of somewhere around 1.1. And it is largely an Indian railway dependent business. Uh, most of the business is sourced from Indian railways only. Uh, most of it leasing and most of it long term in nature. Uh, though NIMs could be a bit on the lower side, but th this is a pure finance company where you literally have no NPA risk, uh, no long term uh, risk in terms of the ability to borrow or ability to lend because railways is their uh, main uh, customer. And uh, as we all know that Railways has a very expansive and uh, very large program of CapEx spread over the next 5 to 10 years uh, across India, which should benefit IRFC also. So growth in terms of numbers should not be a problem. And uh, in terms of uh, valuation, I think the stock should ideally trade at a, P multi at a price to book multiple of somewhere around 1.5. So considering forward multiples, I think she can continue to hold for a target of somewhere around 52. Okay, hold for a target of 52. Richard, would you agree with Sharad on this one that this is a good stock to hold on to? It has seen good momentum in the past few days as well. I think as of late, we have seen that the PSU railway stocks have witnessed good buying interest where the price upmoves have also been supported by good volumes. 
And now if we see the recent corrective phase where uh, no, since the start of December, the, we have not seen any significant price up move, but rather it has been more of a time-wise correction which is going on. So on, on small corrections, the volumes are not that high compared to what we saw during the price up move, so which is a good sign. So you can, uh, she can continue to hold on to IRFC, uh, can expect targets around uh, no, 38 to 40 in short to medium term. Okay, that is the view coming in on IRFC. The next query comes in from Yashwan Sivakumar, who writes to us from Bangalore. He holds 100 shares of Tata Elixir at an average cost of 850 rupees. So he has made some good money on this one. He's a long-term investor and wants to know whether he should hold or whether it is time to book profits. Sharadi has made a lot of money on this one, but the question is, can he make more holding on to this stock? Uh, yeah, he surely can. Uh, but I think we missed Bank of Maharashtra in the earlier query. I think uh, Bank of Maharashtra one should also exit because the valuations are a tad expensive. And uh, regarding Tata Alexi, I think see the innovation, the EV innovation center with Renaissance, etc. And uh, their presence in AI and IoT, there is a high possibility there could be substantial re-rating going ahead. Uh, Some time back, the valuations were scary, actually 70, 80 times forward. Uh, but right now on expectations of around 16-17% growth, the valuations have come down to somewhere around 42 times FY25. So I'm not saying that they are cheap, uh, but they are businesses in the uh, company which could uh, have a multiplier effect over the long term. So uh, rather than have a one or two year horizon, I think if you extend your horizon to uh, three to four or five years actually, uh, this could be a very good long term investment where you could have multi-bagger kind of returns in spite of being at high valuations. Uh, the group comfort is obviously there, so I think he can continue to hold on. All right, let me ask Ruchit as well. Ruchit, what do you think of this one, Tata Alexi? Uh, so my take would be to uh, no better to shift to some other name within the IT basket uh, because if you look at last three or four months, in fact last six months the stock is uh, no has been underperforming the other IT names as well. So even on the medium to long term charts, I think the recent correction has witnessed some higher volumes, which indicates that uh, no uh, the stock is unlikely to see some uh, no up move that we have witnessed earlier over the last few years. On any pullback moves, the resistance for the stock would be seen around 7,000, 7,200 range. So my advice would be to better take an exit on pullback moves towards that resistances and look for some better other opportunity within the IT basket. Within the mid-cap IT space, I think NIT technologies uh, no, could be a good uh, 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 option uh, uh, option over Tata Alexi. Okay, got it. That is the view coming in on Tata Alexi. The market continues to fall in the only sort of a uh, spot of green right now is coming through from the pharma pack because that is holding steady in this very weak market. So DVs, actually all five of the top, uh, you know, gainers on the Nifty are from the pharma pack. The index in itself has seen an over 2% move right now. That is the Nifty Pharma index holding up well while the rest of the market is seeing sharp cuts. So we're going to get back to our queries in just a bit. But first up, let's get into a quick break. I'm going to request our guests to please stay on and then we'll get back to queries. Welcome back. You're still tuned into your stocks on CNBC TV 18. We're seeing a little bit of, uh, you know, a move higher from that absolute low level that we hit just a few minutes ago. There you have it on your screen. And some of the tech stocks have seen a move in the past few minutes move higher. So take a look at TCS, take a look at Infosys. These ones are managing to, you know, rise a little bit in addition to the pharma names uh, in this otherwise very weak looking market. There you have TCS coming up with a good gain and Infosys also on your screen. So uh, the in fact, the Nifty Bank has also cut its losses a bit. We were seeing an over 800 point knock on the Nifty Bank. But right now it has come down and we've recovered around 100 points from those low levels. So that's what's going on with the market action. But we st uh, still have our guests with us, Sharad, as well as Ruchita with us to answer all of your stock related queries. And the next query comes in from Kuldeep Sood, who calls us from Himachal Pradesh with an investment query. Uh, Mr. Sood, please go ahead, ask us your query. Our guests are on the line as well. And then we will have both of them answer this. Thank you very much. Uh, I was uh, interested in making some investment in the pharma sector. Okay. Considering that uh, the uh, pharma prices are uh, low just now. Hmm. So I would like to know, you know, I would like to invest about 50,000. Okay. And would like to know which companies are the best. Okay. And I have one more query uh, regarding Motherson SWI. Hmm. I have about uh, 1,400 shares of it at almost zero cost because these were allotted at the... Uh, as a breakup of the other company. Yeah. So should should I get out of this, uh, take profit or add more and hold on? I'm a long-term investor. 
Okay, you're a long-term investor. Let's ask our guest, Sharad. Uh, first, um, you know, let's get to the pharma query because he said he wants to, you know, invest in the pharma space. So what would you recommend? He is a long-term investor. Uh, what would be your pick of the pack? Uh, see, I would allocate, I would say that allocate around 60% uh, of the funds into a frontline stock like Dr. Reddy. I think uh, most of the problems that they had over the last four or five years, uh, most of them are behind us. New launches should be very aggressive over the next few years. Uh, we expect earnings growth to be very healthy over the next few years. So considering um, um, an earnings multiple of somewhere around 20-25 uh, times also, I think the stock has potential to go up to somewhere around 5,500 to 6,000 over the next uh, two, two and a half years. So allocate around 60% to Dr. Reddy. And uh, considering the scope and the opportunity that Biologics present, I think Biocon after this corrective phase is at a very decent valuation. And uh, I think that is something where you can allocate the rest of the 30%. Uh, though the debt overhang is there after this recent acquisition, but in the long term, I think uh, that will play out very well. Okay, got that. That is on pharma. Let me also ask Richard, then we'll get to Madison Wiring. Richard, your uh, call on the pharma space and what do you think looks really attractive right now on the charts from within the pharma sector? I think yes, uh, no, a perfect day to ask this query. Uh, no, since we have been uh, witnessing a good price up move after a long time in the pharma space and they have been showing a relative outperformance now. So CIFLA is one stock where technically we have seen a breakout today. The today's range breakout is accompanied by very good volumes. So we are expecting target somewhere around 12.20, 12.40 in short to medium term in CIFLA. And within the hospital pack, I think Apollo Hospitals should be one stock which should be added to the portfolio right now, even if you are looking from a short term perspective or from a long term perspective. So the price structure is quite good over there where we have seen a decent consolidation over its 200 day moving average support and the high top high bottom structure has been resumed now. now. So we expect some good outperformance from Apollo Hospitals as well. So Cipla and Apollo Hospitals would be my two picks from this uh, packet. Okay, that is on the pharma space. Also now let's come to Madison Wiring because he did ask us about that as well. Your call on this uh, stock? Uh, so more or less we are witnessing more of a time-wise correction which is there in the stock but the good thing is that the stock is holding on above its crucial long-term supports which are somewhere around 54 rupees. So till the stock holds above this 54, technically the structure is not much negative but more of a consolidation which is going on. So as of now you can wait and uh, no, wait for a next directional move which comes in in the stock and keep a stop loss below 54 rupees on the existing positions. Stop loss below 54. Let's get Sharad in for a technical uh, for a fundamental check on this stock as well. Sharad, how does this one look to you? He, uh, you know, our viewer did mention that he has a long term um, time horizon. Uh, it seems a tad expensive actually, uh, though it has a lot of uh, growth uh, to offer over the next uh, two, two, three, four years. Uh, but uh, even considering FI25 numbers to uh, nearly double and grow to around two rupees per share of an EPS. Uh, still, the stock is trading at somewhere around uh, 30 times. So I think it would be better to switch from this to uh, Madarsan Sumi, hoping that uh, most of the European problems would uh, gradually come down over the next, uh, you know, uh, six, seven months and gradually you would see an improvement there. So I think uh, and valuation comfort, the parent company looks like much better rather than this one. So I think you can switch from this to uh, Madarsan Sumi, the parent basically. Okay. Some than Madarsan. All right, switch to Sambar, then Madison might be better. Mr. Sooth, I really do hope that, you know, that helps answer your queries both on the pharma sector and where you could put fresh money to play as well as on Madison Wiring. The next query is from Anu Agarwal, who writes to us from Pune. She hosts 25,000 shares of IDBI Bank, which she bought at around 59 rupees. She's a short-term investor and wants to know whether to hold or sell. Uh, Short-term investor, Ruchit, this stock has done well already. Um, she bought, you know, at 59.4, but it has come off those levels. So she definitely got in at quite a high point. Do you think that in the short term, there's money to be made here? Frankly, I know the stock had already seen a rally from that 40, 42 yeah. mark to six, almost 60 rupees off late. So I think the entry price is quite high. Uh, so keep a stop loss in the stock. The immediate, the previous swing low which we saw uh, in the second week of December was around 53.60. So that becomes a very important support for the stock. And in case if that is breached, then we could see some price-wise corrective to retrace the entire recent up move. So keep a stop loss below 53 and a half. I think that would be a better idea to uh, you know, watch out for short-term moves. Okay, that is on IDBI Bank. Sharad, very quickly, I'm going to come to you as well on as on uh, this one. Do you think that this one? For a you know for a decently short term time horizon is something where we could see some gains and at least recover the losses. 
no, I think it's already trading near its fair value. So uh, considering FI25 numbers, I think 44 kind of book value we are expecting. And the bank is planning to grow around 10-12%. So 44 price to book of 1.3, I think 57 is roughly the fair value that we are assigning to the bank. So All right. I think she should expect all right, got it. That is on um, IDBI Bank as well. And on that note, I'm going to have to thank both of our guests, Charas, as well as Richard. Thank you very much for joining us and taking us through all of these viewer queries. But we are going to wind down on this edition of Your Stocks with the news that the market is not looking good. We're back above the 18,200 mark, but it is still a 9 tenths of a percent cut that we have seen on the index. A lot of pain coming through from the financials. So stay tuned because closing bell comes up next for what is promising to be an event for last hour of trade.